The MSI Optics G242 is yet another gaming monitor, but it can do a lot more than just being a gaming monitor with some caveats of course. Because is there anything without caveats really? Hey everyone, Mukul here. So we recently bought this monitor for both gaming and productivity purposes. As we now live in an era of gaming monitors where gaming monitors with accurate color depiction has become a crucial feature now. I mean almost accurate colors. MSI has been developing really good PC components and peripherals as per my observation over the past few years and they claim to have sold over 3 million monitors worldwide too. The box came with this narrow sheet which made it easier to pull the monitor's packaging outside of the box but me being me, life was still a struggle. The base stand is quite wide and is completely metal which is good in case you ever need some sort of weaponry at home and when there's nothing but a monitor in that home. The stand is quite sturdy though. The monitor powers on with this sizable power adapter but there is no earth pin on the plug. There was a HDMI cable in the box but sadly no display port cable. <sighs> which means more investment. Anyway, I will post a cable link below which works for this monitor. Installation was pretty easy. Make sure you use the packaging to raise the height of the monitor as you screw in the back stand. In total, it took me 2 minutes to screw in the 4 screws and put this plastic cover on the back of it. MSI could have simply ignored this part but they do know now that no one likes ugly stuff anymore. The monitor kinda sorta has VESA mount compatibility as the mount is a bit recessed into the monitor. So if your mount has protruding things, it might not fit very tightly. So not all the mounts will be compatible and that is something you have to try for yourself as all my monitors currently sit on the table comfortably. Sadly, the monitor only swivels up and down at an angle. If they had an alternate option here for this monitor with a height adjustable stand, I would have preferred it. It has two HDMI 1.4 ports and one display port 1.2 with a 3.5mm uh, output jack and of course a power connector. But sadly these ports are underneath the monitor so it won't be easy to plug uh, the cables in without making the monitor lie flat. The audio quality from the jack is just average so don't put your main set of speakers in them. There's also a joystick on the back which moves in all directions and I got used to navigating through the OSD menu with it quite easily. Well, overall the monitor looks quite nice and the back has these groovy textury parts with some polished glossy parts and a fine noisy part. So basically all the materials you can imagine are there for you to stare if you ever plan to sit behind the monitor. The panel has an uber matte finish and no not the writing app but it will diffuse any light over it which is ideal because who really wants uh, glossy frigging screens in 2021. The monitor is 23.8 inches full HD 144Hz IPS panel and the panel manufacturer is Panda. I would have loved if the panel was a complete 24 inches but okay. The bezels on the side are typical like most of the monitors in this price segment. There's a white chin on the bottom which is also quite typical. So yeah, typically typicalish. Well, the G242 covers a tad less sRGB and DCI-P3 color spectrum as compared to the uh, G241. And as per my vague research, I could find that MSI did this to improve the response time on this panel so they had to sacrifice a little bit on the color spectrum. The panel supports 6-bit color depth plus FRC which means it can simulate 8 bits color depth but it's not a true 8 bits panel. But nonetheless, the colors are vibrant and there are a ton of different modes to play in the OSD menu too. But from the very get-go, I didn't feel as if the colors were leaning towards anything specific and overall they were quite neutral and nice which is something I love on monitors. I mean this does sound simple but a lot of uh, monitors fail to achieve that so I was pretty impressed with this. For me the monitor's USB was its super impressive white color gamut coverage both at the sRGB and DCI-P3 levels with it also being a 144Hz gaming panel but I couldn't find the Adobe RGB value anywhere but I guess it's somewhere around 85%. Well look at me throwing guesses at your face. The panel is rated for 250 nits of brightness and it honestly looks less on papers but the screen is ample bright. I had to turn down the brightness and contrast to 60 each to have it at comfortable levels. On the screen I got there was a slight backlight bleed on the left and top of the screen which wasn't really noticeable during the typical usage. But I did notice a weird thing that during this test uh, the monitor just kept turning off so the pure blacks were putting the monitor to sleep for some weird reason. When I compared the colors on the MSI next to my other Acer monitor which has a 8-bit plus FRC panel on it, the color difference wasn't really noticeable. I mean the difference was definitely there uh, but I'm pretty sure that it is going to be visible in a few, very few highly intensive production workloads. 
For anything lesser than that, you are really not missing on much. You can however adjust the RGB values only in the OSD menu and there is no sRGB mode. The contrast ratio looked wide enough, I had no issues with it and the viewing angles on the panel are great and I like how all good IPS panels behave now. I felt the cinema mode is definitely best for uh, well cinema stuff of course as it doesn't shoot up the exposure of parts in a video which has some sort of dynamic range details like in this example. Enabling HDCR will brighten up your media content but very slightly but the change isn't sudden and it takes a few seconds to choose the right contrast ratio for that uh, specific content you are watching. But never enable this when you are gaming as it will disable everything else. Image enhancement kind of works like adding over sharpening on the images. I prefer it to be set at either weak or off. The monitor supports both AMD FreeSync and Nvidia's G-Sync but the G-Sync part is not certified. That means the monitor supports it but MSI can't really market the monitor with it. The different game modes are a bunch of presets. The FPS one just over sharpens everything and desaturates the color a lot too. And the racing one is the total opposite of the FPS and just sharpens the overall image or the game on your screen even more with too much saturation overall. The best option for me whilst gaming was RTS. That is if I want to choose a preset and not fiddle much with the settings. I also noticed that the FPS and racing modes, uh, they do not alter the response time setting which was a bit weird. They do however change the sharpness to 2 and 4. So you can say the sharpness here is like the overdrive setting on the monitors from other brands. The night vision works like black equalizer which you can find in some LG monitors. It basically enhances the blacks and also increases the brightness of the overall image or game on the screen. This can really help in some over contrasty scenarios as this is definitely a faster way to bump up the brightness of the overall scene uh, whilst preserving some contrasting levels on it. But if you're someone who reads a lot on their screens then I would suggest you go with the AI option which generally looked the best for uh, the text readability. The MSI G242 claims to have a 4MS MPRT. When it comes to any visual input lag during gaming, well to be honest there was hardly any which my eyes could perceive. I have spent a lot of time playing a few games I play the most and even with adaptive sync off, my eyes really didn't notice any screen tearing. But of course this case was with those 144 FPS capped games. You can see and notice that with adaptive sync on, there is definitely a slight improvement in the ghosting of the object here but as soon as I turn on the anti-motion blur feature, the result is rather surprisingly good. But this makes the overall brightness of the screen reduce drastically and which is something which won't be liked by many gamers. I mean these are definitely fast moving objects with fast moving eyes which also need fast moving brain cells and fast moving hands. I mean unless and until you have any of those or in short if you are a casual gamer, I don't think you'd notice any sort of input lag from the screen. You cannot adjust the brightness once you turn on the anti-motion blur feature but the contrast can be adjusted. Pushing the contrast to maximum does improve the overall brightness but it's nowhere near the actual brightness capability of the panel. The perfect setting for gaming could have been a decent amount of brightness with anti-motion blur on but the feature really works and even though it works with a major drawback. It could really be handy for many gamers as a lot of ultra competitive gamers would love to have a feature like this on a monitor in this budget. The joystick controller on the back can run these four shortcuts with the four directions so accessing some of these features instantly without digging in deep in the OSD menu, I mean this could be very handy for a lot of users but I have no idea what that alarm thingy does. There's also a supported software known as MSI Display Kit which can help you play with different split windows layouts and various other color settings too. You can adjust the specific red, green and blue channel for their gamma, level, brightness and contrast which does feel pretty thorough. And there's another tools tab in the end which has few options to adjust your mouse settings for some reason and also play with multi-monitor options too. But you can't store or save your personal settings for different kind of use cases like how I could do on my Acer monitor. So I hope they update this as a feature in the future uh, which is really helpful. So yeah by the end factoring the price for which I got it for, this option from MSI really stands strong as compared to its current competition. I wouldn't have minded uh, going for a cheaper Acer option with a slightly faster refresh rate on it but the option of having an even better and wider uh, color gamut coverage made me invest a bit more towards the MSI and luckily by the end of it, it was the right call. So the perfect combination of having a wider uh, color gamut plus the option of uh, turning on the anti-motion blur reduction feature which works really frigging good. Yeah, I don't see many of you going wrong with this as a good productivity and gaming monitor option. 
I will post a few affiliate links in the description below. You can support my efforts on the video by buying from there uh, if you choose this monitor. So do leave a like and sub with the bell if this video helped you in any way. Stay safe humans. That's all for today. Mewball out. <laughs>